Hello everyone, myself Hena Shah, Assistant Professor at LG Institutes of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to discuss few more topics of Laplace transform. So let us begin with the first topic that is Laplace transform of integrals. So if Laplace of f of t is equals to f of s, then Laplace transform of integration 0 to t f of t dt is equals to f of s upon s. So here if we have integration then we have to divide f of s by s. Okay. So let us start with the proof. So we all know the definition that is Laplace of f of t that is integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. Here our f of t is integration 0 to t f of t dt. So in place of this we will put integration 0 to t f of t dt. Okay. So now let us solve this by using integration by parts that is the formula integration u v dx. u integration v dx minus integration du by dx integration v dx whole dx. Fine. So if we apply this formula we have to take this as u and this as v and solve using integration by parts. So this will remain as it is integration v dx. V is this. So integration of this will be e raised to minus st upon minus s. Limits are 0 to infinity minus. Again we will do the uh, integration of this and derivative of u. So this will remain as it is. Integration of this will be again e raised to minus st upon minus s. Okay. So now let us simplify by putting the limits in this bracket. So this whole bracket will go to 0. So only this bracket will remain right and here derivative of integration so only f of t will remain this take out outside minus minus plus. So we will have 1 upon s e raised to minus st f of t dt. Now we know integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt is equals to what f of s. So put f of a s in that place. So finally what we will get Laplace of integration 0 to t f of t dt will be equals to f of s. So whenever you see integration just divide f of s by s to get your required answer. So let us understand this using examples. So we have to find Laplace transform of integration 0 to t e raised to t sin t upon t. Ignore everything and just find the Laplace of sin t first. So go step by step and this is an important sum. So Laplace of sin t will be equal to what 1 upon s square plus 1. Right? Now as I said before also apply e at last. Okay? Now let us uh, firstly find Laplace of sin t upon t. Whenever you have t in the denominator, formula is integration s to infinity f of s dx. Right now our f of s is this, that is 1 upon s square plus 1. So it will be equals to integration s to infinity 1 upon s square plus 1 ds. Now we know this formula of integration of 1 upon x square plus a square will be 1 upon a tan inverse x upon a. So here the integration will be only tan inverse s limits are s to infinity. If you put infinity tan inverse infinity is pi by 2. If you put s it will be tan inverses. So final answer is what cot inverse of s. Now let us bring this e. So e raised to t sin t upon t. Apply your cost shifting theorem that is you have to replace s by s minus a. Here the value of a is 1. So replace s by s minus 1 in your final answer that is this. So answer will be what? Cot inverse s minus 1. Now only one thing is remaining that is to bring our integration 0 to t right. And the function is e raised to t sin t upon t dt. So formula is what f of s upon s. So this is now our f of s right. So put that f of s. So final answer is 1 upon s cot inverse s minus 1 right. This is your final answer. 
let us go to our next example so we have to find laplace transform of double integration 0 to t sin at dt dt firstly find laplace of sin at so it is equals to a upon s square plus a square right so this is our f of s now because we have double integration right so what we can write it as double integration 0 to t sin at dt dt if you had a single integration what you would have written f of s upon s now here we have integration two times so we have to divide by s square so your final answer will be a upon s square into s square plus a square right so this is our answer of this given example so now let's go to our next topic that is laplace transform of periodic function but firstly let us discuss what is periodic function so a function f of t is said to be periodic if there exists a constant p greater than 0 such that f of t plus p is equals to f of t for all values of t that is for example you can say sin x plus 2 pi is equals to sin x so sin is a 2 pi periodic function right so this is known as a periodic function now let us study the definition of laplace transform of periodic function so if f of t is a piecewise continuous periodic function with period p then laplace of f of t is equals to 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus p s integration 0 to t e raised to minus s t f of t dt okay so now let us start with the proof so we are given that the definition laplace of f of t that is integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus s t f of t dt right now the given function is periodic right so what we will do is we will split the integration in two parts that is from 0 to p and from p to infinity. Now in the second integral only right we will replace this t by x plus p. So your dt will be dx now let's change the limit. So if t is p right if you put in place of t p then x will be 0. If you put t as infinity, x will be infinity. Let us put all these values in second integral only. Put this as it is, right? So now Laplace of f of t will be integration 0 to p e raised to minus st f of t dt plus integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x plus p f of x plus p dx. Now we know that the given function is periodic. So we can write f of x plus p as what f of x whenever t is greater than 0. So this we can write it as f of x. If we simplify this, this can be written as e raised to minus x. Sx into e raised to minus st. This is constant. So take that outside, right? Now from this step, what we have done just uh, change the variable from x to t. So we will get e raised to minus st integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. But we know from the definition that this is Laplace of f of t and here also we have Laplace of f of t. So we will take this term on this side and take out Laplace of f of t common right. So what will remain 1 of minus e raised to minus st. And here this integral will be mean that is 0 to p e raised to minus st f of t dt. So finally bring this on this side. So finally Laplace of f of t where f of t is a periodic function right. So the formula is 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus p s integration 0 to p e raised to minus st f of t dt. So now let us study one example based on this. So we have to find Laplace transform of this given f of t. So from this you can identify that the given function is a periodic function with period p is equals to 2 pi upon omega, right? So now let us find the Laplace transform. So the formula for Laplace transform of periodic function is 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus p s 0 to t p e raised to minus st 
f of t dt. Now put the value of t. So it is 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus ps. 0 to 2 pi upon omega e raised to minus st f of t dt. Right? So now let us split the integration in two parts. So 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus ps. So now the two parts will be from 0 to pi by omega and from pi by omega to 2 pi by omega. Right? But in this interval you can see the function is 0 and here we have e raised to minus st and in 0 to pi by omega the function is sin omega t dt. Right? And here p is what? 2 pi upon omega. Right? So now let us evaluate the integration. So it will be equal to 1 upon 1 minus e raised to 2 pi s upon omega and integration 0 to pi by omega e raised to minus st sin omega t dt. So in order to evaluate this, we will use the following formula that is integration e raised to ax sin dx dx. So formula is e raised to dx upon a square plus b square a sin bx minus b cos bx, right? So, this is the formula. So, here the value of a is what? Minus s and b is omega. Let us put this value in this. So, what you will get? 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus 2 pi s upon omega. The limits are 0 to pi by omega. Let us put these two values in the formula. So, we will have e raised to minus st upon s square plus omega square into minus s sin omega t minus omega cos omega t. Right? Now, let us put the limits. Put the upper limit first. So, if you put pi upon omega, so here it will become e raised to minus s pi upon omega upon s square plus omega square. Here what will remain sin pi and the value will be 0. So this is 1. Here if you put pi upon omega cos pi will remain and the answer is minus 1. So what will remain plus omega. Now we will have to put the lower limit e raised to 0 is 1. So 1 upon s square plus omega square right sin 0 will be 0, cos 0 is what? 1, right? So, what is remaining? Minus omega. Now, what we will do is, we will take out this omega upon s square plus omega square common. So, write this. And then into we have 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus 2 pi s upon omega. And from this, what will remain only? e raised to minus s pi upon omega plus 1. Now we will apply the formula of a minus b into a plus b that is a square minus b square. Here you can simplify this. You can see that this can be written as so omega upon s square plus omega square into 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus pi by omega into 1 plus e raised to minus pi by omega s. And here this will remain as it is, right? Now you can see these two get cancelled out. So our final answer is omega upon s square plus omega square into 1 minus e raised to minus pi s upon omega. So this is the formula which we have to use to simplify this. Okay. So I hope you have understood both the topics. Thank you for watching.